Well, what I've done here, I'll uh, tell a photo of the bit. So I've compared the Pilgrim Fathers in America and, and the beginnings of British colonisation in Australia. So the Pilgrim Fathers are religious dissenters, are very puritanical. When they arrived in Massachusetts, they found the country bleak and uninviting in the extreme. The snow was half a foot deep and the fierce wind blew the spray of the sea upon them where it froze until their clothes looked like coats of iron. Good stuff, isn't it? Uh, but they hadn't sought ease and comfort. They expected hardships and discouragement. They landed at Plymouth Harbour and on 16 December 1620, which is the middle of winter in Massachusetts, they, uh, it was 102 days since they left Plymouth in England uh, and they landed in the face of a wintry storm on a barren rock known as Plymouth Rock. Once again, I can't help quoting Cole Porter who said that uh, if they were in uh, the United States today, meaning the 1930s, Plymouth Rock would land on them rather than vice versa. Uh, Next they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean. So the United States began with prayer. Compare the beginnings of the colonisation in Australia. Uh, the female convicts were landed in Sydney on the 6th of February 1788. The sailors asked for some rum to make merry with upon the women quitting the ships. They soon became elevated and all that night there were scenes of debauchery and riot which beggared description and a thunderstorm put an end to the orgy. So the United States began with prayer as a settler society, Australia began with an orgy. And that explains some of the differences between Americans and us. Uh, it explains American idealism and I guess also we could say American, uh, what shall I say, uh, uh, holier than thou attitude to the rest of the world. Uh, so that's Massachusetts. Rhode Island and New Hampshire, etc., were established as, as, re as refuges for dissidents from Massachusetts. Because whenever two or three Protestants are gathered together in the Lord's name, there is a schism. That is the essence of Protestantism. You believe what you want. There's no Pope to tell you what to believe, so uh, as soon as they establish a society, they start splitting. I'm from the Clarence River District in the little town of McLean. It's full of Scots and there's about seven different Presbyterian churches. <laughs> uh, all of, of different, uh, different uh, uh, colours. Uh, Pennsylvania was set up as a refuge for Quakers, also English religious dissidents and pacifists. Maryland, named after the Virgin Mary, was set up as a colony for English Catholics who were also persecuted in England. Uh, French America is very different. Canada was a peasant society. So poor peasants were brought across from France and settled on the rich plains of the, uh, of the St Lawrence River, were bordering the St Lawrence River. But Louisiana was very different. Louisiana, at that time, believe it or not, the climate in uh, Canada was considered very desirable, even though we would consider it rather cold. Uh, and certainly Canada was very productive, great wheat growing country, uh, whereas Louisiana was considered tropical and hazardous to health. But the French wanted a base in the southern part of what is today the United States, so they set up New Orleans. Uh, and how did they populate it? Well, they offered the, the prostitutes who'd been arrested and the gangsters who'd been arrested of the northern French towns freedom if they would go to New Orleans. And it worked. So New, New Orleans is a city and Louisiana is a state based on sensuality. That explains Britney Spears. Uh, <laughs> the Dutch, of course, bought New Amsterdam from the, uh, from the Americans. I've already explained how Peter Minwood bought, uh, bought Manhattan from the Native Americans and the British took over in one of the Anglo-Dutch wars in 1660 to turn New Amsterdam into New York but it still has lots of Dutch names of course and this kind of Dutch flavour to it in some ways. Second last topic, how am I going? Not too bad. The Atlantic slave trade. Oh, I left out one picture, sorry. I should have shown you this when I was talking about plantations. That's uh, Savannah, Georgia. Right, so this is, uh, this is one of the early settlements. This is tobacco growing country. 
Savannah, of course, still has his street plan. Any of you who've read the novel or seen the film, what's it called? Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, is that it? That's it, isn't it? I always get the title confused. I know all about Savannah, Georgia, and a very attractive place. My colleague Andrew Moore went for a holiday to Savannah, Georgia, but he's much richer than I am, so he can afford to do that sort of thing. So this is Savannah, Georgia. You can see you can see the wilderness of North America all around, but already they're establishing a port and a town laid out on a rational pattern. Once again, this very early, the North American grid pattern already established, and this is what 1720 or something, or even earlier, the North American grid pattern of a town. The North American cities, nearly all of them, have grid uh, are built on grids. Manhattan is the most famous of all, where they. Just to make it easy, they've numbered the streets and avenues in order, so you know, it's impossible to get lost there. Uh, not impossible to get mud. Uh, so that's, uh, that's Savannah, Georgia. So back to this, the Atlantic slave trade. The uh, slaves captured in West Africa were first important in Brazil as labour in the sugar industry because Brazil had a very small uh, Native American population, but the soil was very rich and suitable for the cultivation of sugar. Sugar was another new vice of Europeans. Uh, in the begins in the 16th and really takes off in the 17th century. Of course, sugar and coffee go together because it's almost impossible to drink coffee without sugar, in my opinion. I know there are some people who can do it, but I can't. Uh, and certainly in the 17th and 18th century, nobody would dream of drinking coffee without sugar. Uh, so, uh, sugar, and sugar was at first considered a rather miraculous substance. Uh, it was even used as medicine, which is why all their teeth fell out. Uh, so, uh, so sugar was, the sugar industry was a stimulus. It, uh, uh, so it began uh, in Brazil and then it, slaves were later critical to the development of the sugar industry in the Caribbean islands. Now I have here a map of the and this is on the view site, so I'll just this illustrates where the slaves are going. And I'll just do it up a bit further so you can actually read it. That's pretty good. Okay, so the, the top map is the first one and a half centuries of this. Uh, and at that time, we've got Brazil and, uh, and Spanish America. Spanish America is taking 21% but mostly to the Caribbean and the northern part of South America. Brazil uh, taking 15 or 16% uh, and quite a few are going to Europe. Now, when we get on to the period 1601 to 1700, this is the 17th century, 40% are going to Brazil. Some are going to the Dutch Caribbean, uh, Curaçao and places like that, 22% uh, are going to the Spanish Caribbean and 20% to the, uh, to the British Caribbean and 17% to the French Caribbean. Now these Caribbean islands of Britain and France had were quite small but they were very productive. They produced uh, sugar which doesn't require a lot of land but it does require very fertile land and well watered land. So, um, and this of course is the origin of the population which uh, used to uh, produce such good fast bowlers for the West Indies, but doesn't anymore. Uh, when we come to the 18th century, uh, Brazil's dropped, and suddenly, where are most of them going? British North America. Uh, what would later become known as the south of the United States. And then, when we, when we get into the 19th century, so the last map is 1811. 1870. Once again, Brazil predominates because Brazil is the last country in the world where slavery is legal. Slavery is legal in the United States until 1863, so it's mostly to the United States and uh, Brazil, but uh, the United States, uh, of course, slavery starting to become a big political issue. The other thing was mortality was much lower in the United States than Brazil among slaves largely because of the Brazilian climate and the fact that the Portuguese weren't as well organised as the British. 
not to put too fine a point on it, uh, the British had superior management techniques of their plantations.